Hi, Smart Home Sunday, welcome. My name's Paul and I'm tinkering with Home Assistant. What I'm really trying to do is get my Philips Hue system to be a whole lot smarter using Home Assistant and some pretty cool automations. If you're interested in doing the same, press the subscribe button and follow along. I'm gonna share my knowledge with you of what I discover as I try to figure out how to make the most of my Philips Hue, home lighting and home assistant. I don't have a lot of knowledge, but you know, what I have, I'll gladly share with you. Now, today might feel like a little bit of a repeat from last Sunday where I was looking at trigger IDs and the light bulb, just like those, went off in my head and I finally figured out how those trigger IDs work. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a follow up to that because today I built the one automation to rule them all. That, that's what it's called, rule them all. If we just have a look at uh, last week's one, the all-in-one lights, let's jump straight into the YAML. So here you can see I had one automation to rule them all. Well, it wasn't really. There's a new one to do everything. A new one to become the new master. Now the problem was, you see, that if you look at the trigger, I was looking for the state of these particular lights, dining table, kitchen, kitchen cupboard, lounge, cellar, to turn on. So all of those were uh, lights that could turn on that would trigger this automation to run. Now that sounds quite good, right? But what I discovered last week is if you use trigger IDs, so you can see I put a trigger ID down here where I'm looking at a kitchen light turning off and then I'm just declaring the trigger ID of kitchen off. So later on in the automation, I can say, if you see the trigger kitchen off triggered, does that make sense? I won't say it again. Then do something. Now, why that's important, and I'll show you what I've done with the rule them all automation, is I've basically split these up. So instead of five lights within the same trigger statement, I've broken them out into five triggers. So I've declared each one of them. You'll see it in a moment. So ID dining on, ID kitchen on. And the reason I've done that is because one of the funny little thing I've noticed is that I do have a logic set up with Philips Hue and Home Assistant that if you turn a light on, this automation will run and it will set the scene. So set the color temperature, set the brightness, depending on the time of day, right? Yeah, I've done some stuff on that. Go and check out the other videos I've done on that for more detail. Today, trigger IDs. Rule them all, one automation. You can have a look at the scenes and things in an earlier video. But so once it's gone through the automation and you've set the scene, you could of course manually adjust something. So I've got a smart switch that you just turn it on and then Home Assistant is going to look at the time of the day and it's gonna set it to the right color and the right brightness. But if you wanna turn the brightness up, well you can hold down that smart switch and it'll fade up the brightness. Now, you might find the exact perfect brightness that you want. Now, the problem I've had with this particular automation is if you then went to another room, for example, you walked from the dining room into the lounge and you turned the lounge on, well, what would happen? The automation would trigger. It would set the right temperature for the lounge according to the time of day, but it would again set what you had perfected in the dining room. Does that make sense? Right. So basically, I decided with the rule them all automation, I will break each room into its own trigger ID so that when you walk into another room and you turn that light on, the only part of the automation that is going to run is the one for that room. So let's have a look. We'll go back out here. We're in configuration. We're then in automations and here you can see rule them all. So click on edit. I just jump straight to edit in YAML. Once you start digging into the YAML, if you haven't done it yet, just, just, just do it. Just fake it till you make it, right? Just copy someone else's code, maybe mine, and insert your own values for the lights you find in your system and just start playing around. It's fiddly, but once you get it working, it's very satisfying. And once you start to be able to read what's going on in the code, it's actually quite clear. It kind of 
pops suddenly you see it and it's just it's like in the matrix i can understand what the yaml says it's very good nice powerful feeling so here's what i've done in rule them all you can see as i just said uh, i'm looking for the dining table light to turn on and as part of a trigger i'm just labeling it dining on so this id here this is declaring this trigger id name as dining on and i've done the same thing one of the lights in the kitchen, kitchen one, it turns on, kitchen on. Right, look for the state of the kitchen cupboard to turn on, kitchen cupboard on. Right, so on and so forth. So down here, light, lounge on, lounge on. Here I'm looking for one of the lights in the cellar, and I'm saying office on because I have a couple of those lights, these ones, in the cellar, but only two of the lights are pointing towards me in what I call my office space it's not really yet it's just part of the uh, cellar but I call it office so here I call it office so if you see that cellar light on home assistant well check the office trigger uh, you can see some other triggers there now also in the rule them all automation I've added in some time triggers and I just bunched those together that's fine. So we'll have a look at those in a moment. But uh, just at 501, 1001, 1301, 1801, 2001, so on and so forth. So uh, this bit will make sense in a little while. Now, if we go down to the actions. So here I have a whole bunch of choose statements. So the automation, when it runs, it gets to choose which one it needs to run. And it just depends on what conditions are met. So here you can see each of these is dependent on which uh, trigger is happening. Now, look, the dining room trigger, if you see, Home Assistant, if you see the dining on trigger fired, are you with me? Right, then run this part of the automation. Now, this part of the automation needs to be duplicated because here I'm passing some variables. This group ID, number nine, this is to do with the Philips Hue uh, group ID, right? So I'm doing an API call to the Philips Hue bridge and I'm saying, hey, there's a group nine. Go and do some stuff with that. Again, I've done some uh, videos on this. Just check out the playlist, the Philips Hue Home Assistant playlist. You'll find some there on how I've set this up. But this is about trigger IDs and I just wanted to show you that I've now made this automation actually simpler uh, previously, I was looking for the state of a light. So I think this will work a little bit more efficient. Because previously, if you turned the dining room light on, the state changing to an on would trigger the automation to run. And then when I got down to these conditions, I was basically saying, hey, check if the dining room light is on, if it is, continue to run the rest of this stuff. Now that's a bit stupid, right? Why should it need to check if the dining room light is on? So I was probably slowing myself down here because there needed to be within Home Assistant and even to Philips Hue, another check. So there might've even been kind of another query through the Home Assistant integration to Philips Hue to say, hey, can you tell me, Hubridge, is the... Uh, the dining room light on, well, we already know it is because the automation was triggered because the dining room light turned on. So this is probably a faster uh, way of doing things. At least in my initial testing, it does seem fast. It's working very well. And so this is what I've done for each of these. So trigger, kitchen on, trigger, kitchen off, then looking between a certain time, trigger, cup it on. As you can see, this is much, much simpler. If I just jump back and have a look at what I did with the all lights. So previously, I was looking at dining table light, turning on, the automation would run. Then if we scroll down here, you could see that I was then saying, okay, just go and check the state of the dining table. If it's on, then run this part of the automation. Don't do this. Don't do this. This is what I did earlier. Now, this is the way to do it. Back into the YAML here. Rule them all with this one automation. Use trigger IDs. And then... 
Yeah, this is good. I hope you can see what I've done here. Hopefully this was useful and helpful. I'm going to do a whole bunch more of these. If you have some questions, put them down below. If you're happy with what I've shared today, a little bit of a thumbs up. And of course, press that subscribe button if you'd like to follow along as I try and figure out what more I can do with Home Assistant and my Philips Hue lighting system. Actually, I've got to say with Home Assistant and lights, it's a really good bit of smart tech to start with because it's so satisfying. You know, you can also test it very easily too. You can really get used to writing your code or your YAML in Home Assistant assistant and then testing it by pressing things and seeing lights react instantly and exactly how you want. Then I think I'll be ready soon to move on to things like checking temperature sensors or motion sensors and all those kinds of things. So a whole lot more still to come. I'll be back again next Sunday for another Smart Home Sunday. Oh, and there's more tech stuff on Tuesday. Always. Every week. Of course. Why not? You still here? Okay, time to go. Watch another video. <laughs> Bye.